Hello everyone, today we will discuss the idea or I would say we will, we will finish the concept of modes in a device and we will start a new topic, the topic of diffusive transport. So please uh, remember that the transport that we studied in last few classes was ballistic transport which means that the electron that was starting from the source side was directly going to the drain side. There was no collision in between, no energy loss or no such kind of things was happening in the device. Before going into the diffusive transport case, let me quickly review what we have covered so far. So we have seen in our discussion of general model of transport that the in equilibrium the electrons in the device in steady state not in equilibrium because when the current is flowing this is the steady state situation. The steady state number of electrons in the device is given by this expression and the steady state charge will be just Q times this and the steady state current in the device is given by this expression which can further be rewritten as 2Q by H m e times F1 minus F2 B e. Okay. We already have derived this expressions, these, expre these are just expressions from the density of states. The D here is uh, the density of states times volume for 3D materials, 3D channel, area times uh, density of states in 2D channel and length times density of states in 1D channel and that is what is shown here. We have for the electrons that are uh, that are undergoing transport, uh, we have discussed that most of those electrons are the electrons very close to the bottom of the conduction band and in that situation this parabolic uh, relationship between E and K holds true. So E is equal to EC plus H bar square K square divided by 2m star and uh, the average velocity in x direction which is essentially which essentially appears and which is crucial for calculation of modes is given by this expression. And by using this uh, velocity expression and the uh, number of electronic states per unit energy expression, we can derive the expressions for the modes in the device. And this is what it turns out to be for 1D <coughs> channel device, for 2D channel device and this is for the 3D channel device. Uh, please uh, keep in mind, I would just remind you that this H function here is the step function, heaviside step function. So, uh, so the, the form of this function is something like this, uh, a heavy side uh, step function, let us say H e minus E c will have this kind of form. Uh, if this is the energy axis and if this is on the y axis we have h e minus e c. So, this function will be 0 before energy e c and this will be 1 at energy e c. So, this will be the form of the heaviside step function 0 to 1. Okay. Which means that uh, generally, uh, so these expressions will be 0 before E equal to E c because uh, this introduces a factor of 0 before E equal to E c for this energy range this all these expressions are 0. So, it means that we are talking about or we are only interested in the conduction band of the devices. Okay. Similarly, in the expression for the number of modes. Apart from this, there is uh, a very uh, intuitive explanation of what is modes especially in a, in a 2D channel, in a 2D channel we explicitly derived it. This is essentially the ratio between the width and the half de Broglie wavelength of the electrons. 
So this is the number of moles is the number of half wavelengths of the electrons that can fit into the width of the device. And similarly in a 3D device, it will be uh, uh, essentially the number of half wavelengths that can fit in the cross -sex section of the device. And in 1D device, it has a different connotation according to the uh, this expression. Especially in 1D device, as you can see, this is essentially constant because there can be only, I would say, one mode in the 1D device, one conduction pathway for the electrons. So now uh, with these expressions uh, at our hands, we are now in a situation to compare the two important quantities in conduction and transport of electrons in devices. One is the density of states, which is represented as D1D, D2D or D, D3D and second is the number of modes in the same channel. So as you can see that uh, for let us say for 1D device, for 1D device uh, the density of states which is essentially G1DE also written here as G D1DE is inversely proportional to the energy and the number of modes uh, this ME is constant for the 1D channel, ME is essentially 1 for E greater than EC. So this number of modes is constant in 1D device and the density of states is a decreasing function, very quickly decreasing function and uh, uh, as you might have seen and we have already discussed this that the density of states in a 1D device uh, has the maximum value close to the bottom of the conduction band. So which means that if uh, these are the edges of the conduction and valence band in the channel, if the channel is very small, we cannot define bands as we define in the bulk material, but we can define uh, still there are regimes uh, or still there are highest occupied uh, molecular orbitals or highest occupied states and lowest unoccupied states and those states will make the, uh, will be equivalent to the valence band and the conduction band in the bulk materials, okay. So we saw that uh, the density of states is maximum at the bottom of the conduction band in a 1D material, it has the maximum value tends to almost infinity at the bottom of the conduction band. So which means that most of the available electronic states in a 1D channel are actually close to the bottom of the conduction band. Almost all the available electronic states are the at the bottom of the conduction band, but that is not the case with number of modes. As we might tend to think that modes and uh, density of states are almost similar concepts, they are uh, correlated to each other, but they are uh, qualitatively and physically they are quite different. Number of modes however is constant as a function of energy, it is only at all energy levels above the bottom of the conduction band, uh, the number of modes is a constant one. There is only one mode which is available for, available for the electron to transport, transport okay. In a 2D device, uh, in a 2D channel, a device which has a 2D channel, as is clear from the expressions that density of states is uh, directly proportional to, is constant essentially, it is independent of the energy, proportional to e to the power, e minus e to the power, e c to the power 0. Whereas uh, the modes in a 2D channel is directly proportional to the square root of E minus EC. What it implies is that if we plot density of states G2D or D2D E, 
it will be constant as a function of energy in a 2D channel whereas the number of modes in the channel will be an increasing function. So it will be something like this M E uh, uh, versus E will be something like this. It means that the density of states, the number of available electronic states in the device is constant for all energy levels after the bottom of the conduction band whereas the number of modes in the channel is very small close to the bottom of the conduction band almost 0 which means that while travelling through the device while electrons are transporting through the device from the source to the drain uh, number of pathways available close to the bottom of the conduction band is very small almost 0 and the number of conduction pathways increases in number as we go away from the bottom of the conduction band. So, so as you can see here physically these two notions are very different although they are highly correlated with each other they are actually uh, this uh, number of modes the notion of modes comes from the notion of density of states and the energy broadening but physically it is quite different than the density of states as is also clear in the 2D uh, channel and similarly in a 3D channel uh, if we look at the expressions the density of states in a 3D channel is directly proportional to the square root of E minus EC. Whereas, uh, the number of modes in a 3D channel is directly proportional to the E minus EC to the power 1, alright. So, what it means is that in a 3D channel, uh, both density of states and modes are increasing function as a, as we increase the energy beyond the bottom of the conduction band after the energy EC both are increasing function but the way they increase is different in first case it is a square root dependence and in second case it is a linear dependence okay. So, so this is a comparative, di uh, comparative study of density of states and the idea of modes in a device. So, please keep in mind that the, this idea of modes is a very important idea and physically it has important connotation when we talk about current because in while the current is flowing while there is a steady state flow of electrons in the device in that case it tells us about the number of conduction pathways as a function of energy in the device. So, uh, uh, so, with this we can uh, we are in a uh, position to basically summarize the discussion of uh, modes uh, in few points. The density of states versus E is used to compute the carrier density because as we can recall from the ex this expression the relationship between the carrier density or the steady state electron uh, population in the device is this. So, in while we are interested in calculating the density uh, the carrier densities number of charge carriers in a device we need the relationship between d e and e and we integrate that plot with a multiplication factor of f1 plus f2 by 2. Similarly, uh, the expression for the current is this, it is basically uh, f1 minus f2 times me times de. So, the relationship between me and e and the integration of the plot of me versus e with a factor of uh, multiplication factor of f1 minus f2 gives us the current in the device and this is an important expression because 
this also gives us the IV relationship, IV characteristics of a, any arbitrary device. The number of modes at any energy E is proportional to the velocity as we have already seen because uh, this factor of gamma E number of modes at any energy is equal to gamma pi d E by 2 and this factor of gamma E is inversely proportional to tau E and tau E is further inversely proportional to average velocity. So, it makes gamma E directly proportional to average velocity. Okay. So, it is the average velocity times the density of states of electrons in the device. That is what determines the number of modes and uh, as we have seen that any depends on the band structure and on the dimensionality. Band structure uh, means the E k relationship. Okay. Because the E k relationship will govern the density of states, it will also have an impact on the gamma E the energy broadening and that will further determine the number of modes in a device. Okay. So, that is all about the ballistic transport in a uh, number the idea of modes in a ballistic transport case. Now, uh, uh, let us uh, see how things turn out to be in the diffusive transport case. And uh, so, what is diffusive transport? If you recall from our earlier discussion, the diffusive transport is I would say more familiar uh, way in which electrons transport and in diffusive transport case, if we have a two terminal device like this, diffusive transport case is the case when the channel is long as compared to the uh, to the mean free path of the electron. Mean free path is the distance or the mean distance average distance traveled by electron between two consecutive collisions and if the channel is, uh, is very long as compared to this mean free path the distance between the two collisions then uh, there would be many collisions while electron is traveling from the source side to the drain side. So, one of the ways in which uh, the electron's motion can be visualized is this electron starts from the source, it goes to a certain point, it collides with maybe an atom there, it is reflected back possibly, uh, then here again it is it collides with somebody else it maybe goes straight again, here uh, it again reflects, it collides, maybe it goes up. So, there is a constant or there is a continuous change of momentum while the electron is traveling, here again a collision may come back or at a angle, collides again, again maybe travels that side some of those electrons, some of these electrons they never reach from the source to the drain. Some of the electrons that start from the source try to go to the drain, they never reach there because of the collisions. Some electrons reach there after multiple collisions, maybe one of uh, the possibilities could be like this. Okay. So, this kind of transport is known as the diffusive transport and this kind of transport is is there in our bulk devices as well. And also the model or the, the way we conventionally understand conductivity and uh, the transport of electrons is this kind of transport. Essentially the roots model was based on this assumption that electrons are colliding with, uh, with intermediate uh, hurdles, intermediate atoms or other things, vacancies maybe and uh, then uh, they are going from the source to the drain side. Okay. 
So, here uh, the truth model or the classical theory of uh, conduction that starts with this assumption that this is the way the electrons are transporting and then they take the average of the motion in uh, various directions. Here we will have a sort of bottom up approach, we have we now know how the electron transport in ballistic case when it directly goes from one terminal to another. Now building on top of that we will see how electrons behave when the transport is diffusive in nature, when the transport is not ballistic. Okay. So, this is a sort of bottom up approach of transport. We have first uh, had a basic understanding of the ballistic transport, now we are trying to see how a diffusive transport case will look like. And there is uh, this new term that comes in picture, this is known as the transmission or transmission coefficient. A new idea of transmission coefficient comes into the picture in this case and that is what we will see. So, uh, so, just to sort of quickly sum it up, for the sake of uh, better visualization, we take a 2D channel length and width in the channel, electron is starting from the source side, it is uh, colliding with maybe many uh, other things in the channel, having a zigzag motion, all the electrons that start from the source may not reach the drain, in fact they do not reach the drain because electron lose momentum, it may also lose energy in between and it may not have sufficient energy to, uh, uh, to be uh, I would say attracted or pulled by the drain terminal and uh, uh, the channel is very long, the L is extremely large as compared to the mean free path where this parameter lambda is the mean free path. Please do not confuse this with lambda b which we discussed shortly uh, uh, before this discussion. Lambda b is the de Broglie wavelength, it is entirely different concept. Here it is the wavelength in case of lambda b, but this lambda is the mean free path, it is the average distance travelled by electron while between two of its consecutive collisions. <coughs> okay. So, uh, now uh, there is an interesting observation that we need to make here. Uh, we have the device uh, like this, a long device now. The source side, let us go back to the energy level scheme. The source side we have EFS, the drain side, on the drain side we have EFD, the Fermi level. In between the channel is very long, uh, generally in long channels the discrete energy levels are not there, there is a continuous uh, electronic states, maybe all these states are allowed. So all these, this is a continuum of states and all these states are allowed, maybe there is a, <coughs> there is a band gap. just above. So, just above we have a band gap and again there is a allowed range of energy values. Similarly, there could be a band gap here as well and all the electronic states below this state may also be allowed. This is a band gap, this is also a band gap and in between we have a continuum of energy states. So, now uh, this source side is trying to pump a lot of electrons, it is trying to bring the channel in equilibrium with the left contact, with the source contact. So now every electron that is injected from the source into the channel like this, it does not go straight away to the drain terminal, this is, this does not happen in this case. This was happening in the case of ballistic transport and that is why uh, there we had the electron directly going from this point to this point and then on the drain contact the electron was losing energy up to the point of the drain Fermi level. 
okay. In this case however, situation is different and uh, electron is now starting maybe from this point to this point, it is colliding with intermediate uh, maybe uh, atoms sitting in the channel. Now uh, it might happen that this electron may lose energy and it go, it might go down in the channel itself. This energy may get dissipated in the collisions, okay. That might actually make energy of some of the electrons. So for example, in this case, this electron uh, strikes with somebody here, loses some energy. It again goes in this direction, maybe strikes again, loses some more energy go again loses some more energy here it has come here now this electron will not be taken by the drain terminal okay because the drain terminal is trying to bring the electrons up to its fermi level the electronic population in the channel up to its fermi level so, all the electrons that have energy above the drain Fermi level are taken by the drain contact. So, this electron may just end up in the channel somewhere, maybe losing energy or not. So, all the electrons that start from the source side do not reach to the drain side and that is why in addition to the horizontal motion of electrons on the energy levels, there is also a vertical motion happening in the diffusive transport case. So, situation may, might be something like this, this is not exactly what is happening, exact treatment comes from quantum mechanics, this is just a classical way of seeing things, uh, seeing how things are happening, okay. Now uh, <coughs> with this uh, conditions, uh, we can in other words say that now electrons undergo a random walk from contact 1 to contact 2 and as we have seen is that the important one of the most important quantity in conduction is this. So if you recall in our derivation of current expression, we did not assume the nature of the transport. It was true both for ballistic transport or diffusive transport. So the this expression of the current 2q by h <coughs> gamma pi d times f1 minus f2 integrated with de. This is true in general case. This is true in the case of ballistic transport, this is even true in the case of diffusive transport. So, the important quantity is this and we have calculated this quantity in the case of ballistic transport. Now we need to see why, what this quantity is in the case of diffusive transport, okay. So uh, as you might anybody can guess that, uh, that the transmission time, the characteristics time, the tau e time in the case of diffusive transport. this tau d e will definitely be smaller than the ballistic transport case. In ballistic transport case, the electron is directly going from the source side to the drain side. No collision, channel is small, electron is directly in a single pathway, electron is traveling through the channel. So, the transit time in the case of ballistic transport would definitely be, uh, sorry, uh, will be smaller. So, the transit time in the case of diffusive transport will be larger as compared to the ballistic transport case. And in best case scenario when, uh, when even in diffusive transport case there is no collision, it will be equal to the ballistic transport transit time. So, if tau d is the transit time in the case of ballistic transport, this will be larger than equal to tau b e. So, which means that gamma in the case of diffusive transport will be smaller than gamma in the case of ballistic transport. 
this energy broadening. And this means uh, this number of modes in diffusive transport case will be smaller than the number of modes in the ballistic transport case. If MD is the number of modes in diffusive transport case, it will be less than equal to the number of modes in the diffusive uh, ballistic transport case. Let me write it here that now ME can be uh, MDE can be written as PE times MBE where MBE is the number of modes in the ballistic transport case and ME is now in the diffusive transport case and this parameter TE is known as the transmission coefficient and the value of TE is always less than equal to 1. So, this is what we can easily say just by looking at the situation that is there in the case of diffusive transport case. It is nothing no I would say or this quantity can now be written as number of modes times TE where TE is less than equal to 1. Actually the number of modes would not change uh, in the device. So saying that number of modes in diffusive transport case is not a physically accurate idea. So that was just to sort of convey the message that this quantity will now be smaller than uh, the quantity that was there in the case of ballistic transport case and this is known as the transmission coefficient. So, in our next class we will uh, uh, we will describe or we will analyze uh, the transmission coefficient and we will analyze this quantity gamma pi d by 2 in more uh, uh, in better details more mathematically. So, until then I would recommend you to again go back to the uh, uh, to the derivation of modes in ballistic transport case and that would be definitely helpful in understanding the our forthcoming analysis. So, that is all for uh, this class. Thank you for your attention. See you in the next class.